Welcome back everyone, this is James of Current Connected. Today we're going to be looking at Victron's new Quattro 2 3kVA inverter with a dual 120 volt output. So to get started, this inverter weighs 52 pounds and overall is 23 inches tall, 13 inches wide and approximately 7 inches deep at the top end. The inverter is available in two variations, the one we have on the desk here is 12 volts and it is also available in 24 volts. So if we take a look at the bottom of the inverter, on the left-hand side, we'll see the glands here for the AC wiring. There's a nice slot for your DC cables on the right. You have your two position on off switch for normal mode and charger mode. And then the two screws to access the wiring compartment are Phillips heads. They've relocated these screws so they're easier for you to access. Inside the wiring compartment, we have our main DC connections. As you'll see, there's two terminals for positive, two terminals for negative. And this is so that you have plenty of options for conductor sizes. If you need to parallel the conductors to run a long distance, you have that option. Typically, if you're going to be running a short distance, two watt cable will be great. However, if you're running more than a couple of feet, four watt will be optimal. Moving over to the AC side of the wiring compartment, we have AC in one and AC in two, AC out one and AC out two. These connections are absolutely massive. They can fit up to two gauge wire, and I'm sure a lot of people will be happy to see that they're using screw down connections now instead of the spring loaded ones. You may be wondering why there's so many connections, and that's because the Quattro 2 has two internal transfer switches, so you can seamlessly switch between inverter power, shore power, and generator power. The Quattro 2 is a 120 volt inverter, but because of the transfer switch design, you can supply it with 240 volts, to the input and the transfer switch will pass through 240 volts to the output. With that said, if no input power is available, then an internal relay joins L1 and L2 together to feed the same 120 volt leg to both lines. Victron's power assist function is pretty unique. You can set an input current limit so you don't overload any incoming short or generator hookups. Even if you're connected to just a single 15 amp 120 volt circuit, you could easily power over 30 amps. This is great for RV parks or at home, where you may only have a small extension cord or a breaker that trips easily. Moving on to our communication ports, as you can see, we have two VE bus ports in the middle. This is for connecting up to your Servo GX or your digital multi-control. Below that, we have a modular plug labeled remote. What this is for is wiring a switch to, so you can turn the inverter off and on if you were to have mounted it in a hard to reach compartment. At the very bottom of the wiring compartment, we have this blue terminal block that is labeled auxiliary relay. This is a switch that has normally open, normally closed contacts. The terminal assembly can easily be pulled away from the circuit board so you can do your wiring and then plug it back on once the wiring is complete. The auxiliary relays on these inverters have a long list of programmable functions such as alarm output, auto gen start and external fan control. Moving on to the green terminal blocks, we have four connections. K1 is a 12 volt output signal with up to 100 milliamps available. K1 can be programmed just like the auxiliary relay. The difference here is that it provides power while the auxiliary relay can only switch power from other sources. Next, we have the external ground relay output and two auxiliary inputs. These inputs can be used with lithium battery BMSs for allowed to charge and allowed to discharge signals. Below that, we have the inputs for the included temperature sensors that can offer temperature compensation for lead acid batteries or low temperature charging cutoff for lithium. Last but not least, we have the optional remote voltage sensing input so that we can measure the voltage at the batteries and zero out any voltage drop on the DC power cables feeding the inverter. It's worth noting that this inverter doesn't have an input for the external current sensor like some of the MultiPlus series that gets used on residential ESS systems. Now it's time for everybody's favorite part, time to dig into this machine and see what's inside. So here we can see the H-bridge going up to the transformer to step up the voltage. Now everything inside here looks really similar to a MultiPlus, except this extra board here for your extra input and output. The Quattro is a transformer-based low-frequency inverter. This makes it great for starting up inductive loads like air conditioning. This inverter could easily power a single rooftop air conditioner, even without using a soft start. And if you were to add a soft start, you could probably power two of them. What's interesting we found with this inverter was you normally see a really large capacitor bank on the DC side, but this inverter has a really small capacitor bank hidden away under the heat sink for the H-bridge. Now that we've seen inside, it's time to power this thing on, see what the idle consumption is, and see how clean the output sine wave is. As you can see, we have this inverter connected to a 12 volt lithium ion phosphate battery that is sitting at 13.1 volts. With the inverter on and no load, we can see that it's drawing 1.19 amps. Volts times amps equals watts. So this 
Quattro 2 is idling at 15.5 watts, which is bang on its specified idle consumption of 15 watts. This is incredibly low because most low frequency inverters with this class of power output will run at an average of 60 watts at idle. The 24 volt model is even more impressive and it's specced at 11 watts of idle draw. Moving over to the oscilloscope, if we put the probe on the hotline L1, we'll see that it has a very clean sine wave with just a small blip at the zero crossing. Other than that small blip, this is what true pure sine wave power looks like. And believe it or not, this is cleaner than most of the grid power across the US. So let's turn on this heat gun that we just hooked up. And as you can see, the waveform holds strong. It's typical for cheap inverters to have a nice clean waveform at idle and then a very distorted waveform when you add a load. But this is certainly, certainly isn't the case with the Quattro 2. We hope you enjoyed this overview of this inverter, and while it may seem like a lot of information to take in at first, there are quite a few other bells and whistles that make this inverter miles ahead of the competition. If you're interested in purchasing this inverter, we keep them in stock here at Current Connected, so check out the links in the description for our website to learn more about this inverter and many other products. We're looking forward to seeing you in the next video, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and comment if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you very much.